tell us about your Story of a Lifetime program, which you speak about in the book. Absolutely. So this was a program created at the UCLA Anderson School of Management Executive Education for a, one of the top financial firms, which I can't mention by name, of course, and it's elite financial planners in these financial firms. So people who deal with LeBron James or Kobe Bryant money, almost literally. Now, the goal of this program is to learn what other people are saying and, and listen to what they're saying, their clients in other words, as they're saying that they have these long-term goals or short-term goals. How do you take key elements of what they're saying and fold it into a narrative, a story that makes sense to the clients themselves? And in doing so, you're showing that you're listening to them, you're showing you care about their future and you're building and strengthening a relationship to them and also you're creating memorable impactful data content that's not numbers it's not these numbers make sense to you so remember these numbers it's I'm hearing what you're saying and I'm gonna pull parts of your life and fold it into this story that has some kind of an emotional pull so when you leave here you're gonna remember the story and that story is gonna lead you to the fact that this data this contents very important in this particular program at the start of the program which isn't part of the book one person on day one stood up and said this is crap this is not useful. So immediately I'm getting pushed back, hard push back in front of the group and the person literally stands up in front of the rest of the class and says this is not going to be useful at the start of the program, three day program. So what I had to do is show this individual, first recognize what he, in this case, gender specific said, accept it at face value. So my postponement of judgment, again, in the spirit of yes and, yes you said this and why are you saying this? Let's talk through this thing. Okay, give me a day. Let's see if we can lay some foundational blocks in place. One of the foundational blocks that we're laying in place, of course, with yes and, is postponement of judgment. So postpone judgment of the first day. Let's see if you're right. If you're right, then I'm sure UCLA will give you back your money. And if you're wrong, there's a day two. And then there's a day three as well. And let's see if we can just do this one step at a time. Now, in this program, we really start to explore divergent thinking versus convergent thinking. And very quickly, divergent thinking is that postponement of judgment. It's the collection of ideas. It's the ability to collaborate with each other versus convergent thinking, which is the separation of the good ideas from the bad ideas. It's the implementation of judgment. It's the critical thinking that's put back into place so that ultimately you come up with a creative solution or an innovative solution at the tail end of this. Now, the challenge that we had with them is creating a story in the spirit of a Hollywood movie because of course UCLA is based in Westwood, California right in the almost in the middle of all of Hollywood right next to Bel Air and Beverly Hills you know lots of sexiness happening all over there so we had them separate into teams there were five teams I think or six teams and each one had to work together to create a movie pitch the first challenge we had for them, in the spirit of divergent thinking, is in a block of time, come up with as many movie ideas as you can. Start brainstorming. How many ideas can you come up with? Once you get past that first block, I can't go any further, there's nothing else out there, go again. Go again and go again, and we were really encouraging them to bring ideas to the table. All ideas are accepted. Money is not a challenge at all. You have ultimate financing, ultimate possibility. Reach for the stars at this one. Just idea after idea after idea after idea after idea. Now some of the groups took this really seriously and in around 30 minutes came up with 25 or so ideas, lots of ideas. And some of the groups, like the one that individual was in, came up with around four, five, six ideas. Showing that they really weren't trying at all. Now, once they come up with ideas, we're going to enter in the convergent thinking side. Now it's time to judge. Which are the ideas that you just had needed to throw out there just to keep the momentum going that are just really bad ideas? Get them out of the way. What are, so what's that middle tier of ideas? You know, what, what's interesting to you? And if you can, isolate the top three ideas. These are the, the ones that are really singing to you. Now, from the groups that had 25 or so ideas, that's a, a nice challenge. It's happening over dinner, some drinks. Those who only had four or five or six ideas, not much of a challenge, right? They pretty much knew the idea that they wanted to begin with, and they just sort of, kind of, in a very lazy way, did the exercise and came up with a few other ideas. Once you have those three ideas, now we're going to go back into the divergent side. We're going to blow up each one of these ideas, go to the, the literary questions of who, what, when, where, why, how, and really start fleshing out the details to each one of these ideas. The trick to this now is still in postponement of judgment. 
as you're flushing out these ideas, really reach out there. Really see what's going to happen. After you do it for one, and we were timing them, you move to idea number two. You move to idea number three and flush out all three ideas. Now, the person who called me out at the beginning of the class, actually, his group shut down after the first one. They only focused on their best idea. They said, this is what we want. And I implored them, please, please, go to the next one. Go to that. Well, we know what we want to do, they would argue. Like you're missing the exercise. The exercise isn't for you to pick your best idea right now. The exercise is for you to go through this specific technique and really do the best you can to flush out the ideas for three separate ideas because each of the other two ideas is going to inform the original idea. And you might say, okay, this storyline over here from idea three, which is a bad idea, can actually support the idea that we had in the first place. And maybe even by flushing out three ideas, you're going to find that there's a better idea than what you thought. And sure enough, that particular group did, because that group had a Tommy Boy type of movie in mind, you know, very slapsticky, lazy. And what they ended up coming up with is a Vietnam War story of a tunnel rat who ends up getting trapped behind enemy lines after the end of the Vietnam War and finds, uh, falls in love and finds a son. And it was a very rich story. So after they flushed out the three stories, pick your favorite one. And that's the one that they chose. Not their original idea, not Tommy Boy Goes to Washington. It was this other idea, this richer idea of Vietnam tunnel rat who survives and has to make his way back. Now we go, uh, that went from divergent, flush out the three ideas, convergent, which one do you want to work on, back to divergent. Now flush it out even more. You know, develop it in greater detail. Now, as they're going through that, I, I assemble a panel that includes uh, a screenwriter who sold some movies to Hollywood. Uh, it includes a former member of Saturday Night Live and also one of the producers of Drunk History, a very popular web show that made its way to Comedy Central and became even more popular. And actually stars a lot of my friends from Chicago Improv and was created by a couple of my friends from Chicago Improv as well. So we have this panel of industry experts who then watch them present. So now we move into the presentation mode of business. So we're going from divergent, convergent, crafting a narrative and a story, communicating, collaborating as a team, fleshing out ideas, hearing all voices into presentation. Who can have the most impactful presentation? Five minutes. That's all they have. Who can be on point delivering this pitch in five minutes? And part of, by the way, this is developing a log line. And a log line is that one sentence tie up of the entire movie. You can look at that as an elevator pitch for a business person or a Twitter bio. If you're part of the younger generation who doesn't like the idea of an elevator pitch, same thing, a Twitter bio. You know, a nice rich Twitter bio that's gonna be memorable is an elevator pitch, and for the, our cases, is a log line for this. So they pitch it, they do their five minutes, and then the panel decides which of these six groups is going to make it to the next round. We're going to choose three that make it to the next round. And the three losing groups who don't make it to the next round are going to be folded into the three winning teams. So now the team dynamic shifts. They have to use new resources and they're going to get specific notes from the panel on how they can improve their pitches and their overall story. And they have to incorporate that. And so now they have a brief period of time to assimilate their new team, communicate, collaborate, uh, divide and conquer who's going to take what projects, push it back together again, and make this new idea work, incorporating their notes. And they have 15-minute presentations now to give the, the panel, showing how they've used their new team behind the scenes as well as in the presentation itself and how they've adapted to the new challenges that are put into place as well as new voices inside their team. And they pitch and more or less act out their parts because each one of the groups by this point is very excited. And for the record, we're deep into day two now. So this individual who gave me original pushback made it past day one, is deep into day two, and, and he is, for his pitch, was literally crawling on the ground, acting out the part of that uh, tunnel rat. In the end, the panel judges again, and then the panel are my friends and professional improvisers as well. And I and my co-facilitators, uh, as I had two other co-facilitators with me there, performed an improv show for them as sort of the capstone right after we designated who the winning team was. So the winning team, they were fighting for big grand prizes of a UCLA hat and a coffee mug, you know, that's, that's and the pride of the people, I think, as well, was probably part of that. 
And we celebrated that over a nice dinner and of course some beverages and we performed for them. So now it's our turn to show them what improv looks like in a couple of different ways, including long form improvisation. So we did some short form whose lines in any way type of games and then did a proper 35 minute one act play for them. Uh, improvised completely from top to bottom of course. And then the tail end of that program was tie-in. Let's go to transferability, let's go to accountability, let's go to sustainability. What can you walk out of this program with, use immediately, communicate to other people, and fold into your natural voice. The way that you communicate, collaborate, brainstorm even. How do you talk to people? How do you build relationships? Because that has to come from a postponed judgment as well. If you go back to their jobs, they know they want to get you to this investment. That's their goal. Now they can push or pull, they can shove it down your throat, they can give you a directive, you have to do this. I'm telling you, as your financial planner, this is what you should do. And they can listen. They can take information that's given to them and show that we're part of a team. This is a collaboration and this really is your best interest because I care about you. At the end of this three-day program now, the person who day one stood up and said, this is crap, stood up and apologized to the class and said that he was off base, he learned a lot about it, and also not in the book. We did this program a couple of additional times, and in the second iteration, his son was in the program, who was also a financial planner for that elite institution. And so he passed it along to several other people and said, this is the program you should take. What I didn't mention as well, they opted into this program. They could have, like, this was a thank you from this financial firm, they could have gone to Hawaii, they could have gone to Europe, they could have taken classes at a number of elite business schools, and they chose to go to UCLA to take this program. So for him to start off with that type of pushback is significant considering he opted into that program. And then for him to end the session with humility and vulnerability and then continue to talk about it after he left and encouraged other people who then showed up and took the program itself speaks volumes about really who that individual was and who the class was and for me as well really the power of improvisation when taking the techniques of improvisation and breaking them down into usable ways for people outside of the art the entertainment industry it's a very impactful 